giving residents reassurance in times of worry was the aim as members of Portsmouth City Council and Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service invited them to a meeting at the new Theatre Royal. We appreciate it must have been really, really frightening when you saw those images from Grenville uh, and we want to reassure you that we are doing everything we can to keep you as safe as we possibly can and we are absolutely, this is a, a really big priority for the council, we are not uh, cutting any corners and making sure that everything is done absolutely uh, to the best of our ability. High-rise buildings are designed to have fires in them. In the last two years we've had 19 fires in high-rise buildings across Hampshire. Only three of those have escaped from the room of the compartment of origin. So it gives you some context, and even those three people weren't injured in. It gives you some context about how buildings behave normally in fire. If buildings are built, maintained, and lived in well, they are perfectly safe. So we know, we've seen on the news recently what happened to Grenfell, clearly the cladding is an issue. But also the issue is the work we're doing with Portland City Council and other councils at the moment about really ensuring that the other items in that building are as secure and are intact as possible. The cladding on Horatia House and Leamington House is made of aluminium composite and had been identified at high risk. Works to remove the panels from the 18-storey blocks started on Friday. After further checks, both buildings were found to comply with the existing fire safety measures, meaning that residents can stay in their homes while the cladding is being removed. However, some residents raised their concerns still not feeling reassured. I live in Horatia House. I'm on the 13th floor. And I know you're saying that the cladding is coming off from the bottom. And to be reassured, I'm still not reassured. I'm stuck up there. And I'd like to know how long it's going to be until you actually get up there. I know you said you're trying to look in it always. But I'm still living there with a the little boy and my other son. We're the ones who are living in there. I can absolutely assure you, if you needed to be evacuated for safety, we would absolutely have evacuated. If at any stage we felt you were unsafe, we would take our own action to, to, to remedy that situation. Now, we've inspected. In fact, uh, it's afterwards Mick will happily have a conversation with you because he's part of the inspection team that came to that building and he can talk you through exactly what they did and what they looked at. Uh, but to say that cladding is a precautionary matter because we think that was implicated in what caused the disaster. But actually, as I said earlier, the, the issues are around compartmentation the walls and all that sort of thing to stop the fire spreading. We have checked that in your building and we're content that that's okay. If there's a fire in your building, we, we need the earliest call and that's why we need to make sure that your home safety visits are done, smoke alarms are working, those sorts of things. As soon as we receive a call, there'll be eight fire engines on their way to you. At least two of those will be there within two minutes because they're around the corner. That is why we're happy to continue waiting for the cladding to come off and the arrangements are going on. According to the council, the reason for the first four floors of cladding coming down so quickly is because they're able to use scissor lifters. But to reach the upper floors, scaffolding will be required and works are expected to take months. We're certainly um, conscious of the fact that we need to make sure that we do the, the work safely. That's, that's, that's another criteria that we need to consider. Make sure that we're making sure the building remains watertight. Um, but the reality is that it is going to take uh, coming weeks for us to scaffold, uh, to, to commence scaffolding uh, the block, and then it will take a number of months after that. Throughout the meeting, residents also raised other issues, including malfunctioning lighting and the smoke alarm not being loud enough. There's a gap on the front door. I put a, a, a draft excluder on the bottom, and they say it's a fire door. When that was issued, I don't know, but it um, it doesn't. It doesn't assure me I have a six-year-old. They knew about ongoing issues, and if they knew about it, why wasn't it addressed then? If they say they've carried out safety checks in the block, why wasn't it addressed then? Why is it just being addressed now and they didn't know about it? We carry out fire checks and evacuation plans on you know, residential accommodation that we own all across the city. What's happened since the Grenville fa uh, Tower fire is we've had to check the cladding, and the cladding removal has triggered uh, a new course of action. But actually, our responsibility as a landlord around fire safety and fire protection is there permanently with smoke alarms and fire doors and escape lights and notification of where escape routes are, which is the stairwell in high-rise block. We've had a couple of people query lighting in communal stairwells, escape routes. Uh, we've had one lady say that she's got quite a large gap under her front door, so she sees that it acts as a draft and could be pulling oxygen into her building or, or letting smoke in, I guess, if there is a fire as well. So they, those things will be checked over the next couple of days and certainly the lights and the stairwells we check tomorrow.
those. So we're going to be writing to all the residents as well in Horatia and Leamington tomorrow to give them clarification of the points that were raised this evening uh, and make sure that we keep them updated on when all of the cladding will be removed and importantly what we're going to put onto the building after the cladding uh, has been taken off because that's one of the major things that we now need to do. And of course we're working with the government around that, around how much it's going to cost, the length of time it will cost to get the buildings watertight again uh, and make sure that they are as thermally protective for the residents as we possibly can do. Uh, but my expectation is that the government will be paying for this because uh, that's what they have been clarifying and indicating in, in parliamentary statements over the last couple of days. Nicole Ries, that's TV.